Shaq has an important message for everybody, especially for people in the media, and that is don't call him a celebrity. I really love this story. I meant to get to it a couple days ago. Glad we can get to it now. Shaq is a very, very famous figure in sports, in media, in commentary. And Shaq just told People Magazine that he doesn't want to be a celebrity because celebrities are rude to people and obnoxious. He said, I denounced myself for being a celebrity 30 years ago because a lot of celebrities are a-holes. I don't want to be in that category. I'd rather demote myself to just being a regular person before you call me a celebrity and put me in the category of those jerk offs. <laughs> I don't, I think I can say that on the air, right? So that seems relatively wholesome by our modern cultural standards. I don't like to work with celebrities because celebrities are crazy. So I just like to work with people. And he says, celebrities are crazy. They really are. Don't call me that anymore. These people are out of their freaking mind with how they treat people what they do, what they say. That's never been me. I never want to be looked at like that. So some people are going to look at this and say, oh, that's just false humility from Shaq. You're obviously a celebrity. You're super rich. You're super famous. He's not saying that he's not rich and famous. He's just rightly observing that celebrities often have all sorts of problems and look ridiculous. So when he says, oh, don't call me a celebrity. I just want to be a regular person. He's not even saying that... uh, for you or for me or for anybody else. He's, he's calling for that as a matter of self-preservation. And you see this throughout the ages. People get really dazzled by celebrity. People can become starstruck. But think about celebrities of ages past. Celebrity fades in a second. People who were super famous, admired, all we could talk about even five, 10 years ago, they're forgotten. And then they what? They become washed up. They become a punchline. And very often they're self-obsessed. Very often they are rude to people. Very often they are crazy. It's not even totally their fault. Celebrity is a weird thing. If if you've ever known a famous person and having lived in LA and being around politics, I've met a disproportionate number of famous people. They can go crazy. It's a very strange thing to have everybody admire you at once and come up to you and recognize you and treat you well and pick up the tab. If you don't protect yourself, that can really that can really warp your mind and your perception. And some of the famous people I've known have protected themselves better than others against it. So what Shaq is saying is, no, ultimately, celebrity doesn't mean anything. It's an illusion. And it's a deception. Don't fall for it. And that's so true. And it's, it's a lesson for all of us in this age, because we're in an age where everybody can have their 15 minutes of fame, because anybody can go viral on TikTok. And so it's a, it's a lesson for us. We've democratized celebrity now. And the success of this world can be very damaging to people's souls. It's a, it's a great bit of self-help from Shaq. That is not false modesty. I think that is looking at the world with a steely eye. Because if you or I have met a few famous people, think about all the famous ones Shaq knows. The man knows of what he speaks. Speaking of idol worship, did you know paganism is coming back? Good piece here in Commentary Magazine on the return of paganism. Uh, the spiritual crisis afflicting contemporary America has ancient and enduring roots, and so does the cure. I actually haven't had time even to go through uh, the entire piece, but it makes it a really important point, which is paganism is coming back. The paganism that you don't really notice, where you just start to worship money and you start to worship sex, and you start to worship all the created things of this world, celebrity, and you don't really notice it. Also, overt paganism is coming back. (laughs) Also, steeped in tradition kind of paganism, nature worship, polytheism, that is coming back in a pretty conscious way as well. And the reason for this is that we've kicked Christianity out of the public square. And this has happened not only because of the faithlessness of, of the members in the church, but also because leftist activists have booted it out using the law, using political activism from the public square. So when you don't let kids learn the Bible in schools, when you don't let people pray in schools, when you instead, when you replace the Bible with pornography in schools, as we're seeing today, that's going to change people's formation. So everybody's got to serve somebody. But there, there's a, a priest who, who said that when he was in seminary, he, he was told by one of his teachers that if he should ever leave Christianity, he should become a pagan. And this wasn't just a cheeky line. The reason for this is paganism is at the very least tied 
to nature. And so I'm not advocating that anyone become a pagan, but it's got some connection to reality. And I think uh, a part of the rise of paganism, conscious and unconscious, is that we are living in a virtual world that is now imbued with, that, is, that has been pervaded with this, this silly ideology that, that tells us the things that we know to be true are not true, that, that a man is not really a man, he's a woman, that a baby is not really a baby, it's a clump of cells or whatever. We're living in a, in a world where these ideologies can succeed because we're so divorced from the real world. We live in these little cubes and we insulate ourselves from nature and we even insulate ourselves from our own bodies. We can alienate ourselves from our own bodies through virtual reality, through social media, through the internet. And so there is an appeal, I think, to get back to something tangible, something old, something sturdy. Now, ultimately, that won't be enduring because even the physical world, even nature will pass away. It seems a lot sturdier than the fantasy virtual world that many people are living in now. But even this created world will pass away. So when you are looking for something, when, when you're trying to fill the God-shaped hole in your heart, when you recognize that everybody's got to serve somebody, you've, you've got to go past that. Follow that desire that has led you to the kind of new paganism that's cropping up everywhere. But take it to the place that is enduring. Take it to the source that is outside of this finite world. Uh, take it Take it to he who will not, to him who will not pass away. The United Nations has has made a troubling statement. This is the International Commission of Jurists, with an assist from UN AIDS and the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. It said, quote, sexual conduct involving persons below the domestically prescribed minimum age of consent to sex may be consensual, in fact, if not in law. Now, to translate all of that gobbledygook, what they're saying is, maybe it's okay to have sex with kids. That's what that means. This is from a report titled, The Eight March Principles for a Human Rights-Based Approach to Criminal Law Proscribing Conduct Associated with Sex, Reproduction, Drug Use, HIV, Homelessness, and Poverty. I think of Oren McIntyre, the commentator who's come on this show before, who has a meme that has gone viral, and it's a meme, speaking of The Simpsons, of a bus driver on The Simpsons saying, don't make me tap the sign, and the sign is just a tweet from Mr. McIntyre saying, it's not complicated, they just want to diddle kids. And I I don't think that that's all of of what the sexual revolution is about, but going way, way back, going back to the 1960s, going back to those weird essays by Bernie Sanders in the Vermont Freeman, in which he's writing about how awful it is that we don't sexualize children, and going back to the, the bizarre sexual revolutions of even a little before the 1960s, even back to the days of the leftist intellectual Wilhelm Reich, the, the idea of orgones as being the, the essence of life and the way to cure poverty and cancer and war is to just have a lot of orgasms. I'm not making that up. The way that the libs keep constantly trying to sexualize kids in the schools, in the libraries, expose them to drag queens. There's a highly ideological component about it, but also... Mr. McIntyre might happen to be right. That clip was very, very insightful, if I do say so myself. You can get the whole show right here. Subscribe to the Michael Knoll Show YouTube channel. See you there.